guys, Swift here again. So in this video, we're going to be talking about actors, which in the foundry sense are player characters, non-player characters, monsters, anything you'd consider a token, and what ways you've got available to set them up in 3D, as well as what tools you might have to change them up a bit inside 3D canvas. Actors in general work exactly the same as in base foundry, so you know, they've got normal character sheets, sight range, hit points, names, all the usual stuff. Um, so we won't be talking about that today. Today we're just going to be talking about the 3D side of uh, character models. So I'd like to start by just going through how you actually get a character set up in 3D in 3D Canvas. So to start with, um, I've got an example character here. I've just used the normal create actor button to make them. And when you first drag them into the world, they'll show up as a standee miniature with the default masked hooded heads image here. In order to assign it a 3D model, what we need to do is double right click on them, which opens up the token configuration window here, go along to the 3D tab, and then next to 3D model, if we click on browse files, and uh, what this will do is open up the selection thing for finding a model. What I'm going to do is just grab something from the token compendium, which comes with 3D canvas. Uh, let's go with something from the monster manual. Uh, yeah, a call, that'll do. And then click on update token, and then your 3D model will be in 3D canvas. So what I like to do once I've got a character model in 3D Canvas is open up the configuration again. And then if it's a bit too big or too small, you can change the scale figure here and set up to say 1.5 scale. And then uh, I also like removing the base from each model. So I'll go into show advanced settings here and then tick the box next to disable base and then hit update token. And that just makes it seem like it's more in the world. It's a bit more immersive, uh, I think. But obviously, you can leave that on if you prefer, or even customize the base, uh, which we'll talk about later on. And so with that, this character model is now ready to use, basically. Um, just like any other uh, character model, you can assign statuses, you can turn them into combat mode or off, configure their identity, appearance, vision, exactly the same as you would normally. So the next thing I'd like to cover is uh, ways you can get character minis into 3D Canvas in the first place. Just delete this guy here. Starting with one we've already had a few questions about, which is Hero Forge. Um, since with 3D portraits, we do indeed have uh, Hero Forge integration. So Hero Forge is a website where you can create custom character minis. Uh, they aren't affiliated with us or anything, but they seem like quite a popular choice. So I figured they were worth mentioning. Um, if you have characters on Hero Forge that you'd like to get into 3D Canvas, it's a matter of installing the 3D Portraits module from Ripper's Patreon, which if you have 3D Canvas, then you also have 3D Portraits, and then opening up the configuration on a mini, and then clicking on this Open Hero Forge Browser button, which is next to the uh, Browse Files button for the 3D model. Uh, that'll open up a window, and the first time you open this, it'll ask for your access key, which you can get from your Hero Forge account page. And once you put that in, you'll be able to select any of the minis that you've bought, or had customized or made, as well as, you know, the free ones that they provide as well. So, the models look pretty good, and it's really, really easy to set up. Uh, the caveat with Hero Forge is, of course, that it's not free. You do have to pay for the minis. Um, I believe for the 3D model, it's about $8 for a customized character mini, or about $8 again for a set of, I think it's four or five um, customized NPCs. So they are certainly an option and quite a popular one, but of course not the only option. So probably the more obvious way to get minis is of course to use the uh, 3D token compendium that comes with 3D canvas. Um, that's what most of these examples over here are. So. In the token compendium, there's a collection of minis that were made by a fella called MZ4250. I don't know if there's a special way of pronouncing that or anything, uh, but they are a person. That's just their name. I'll put their website in the uh, description here. And what they've done is they've created a massive library of like more than 4,000 3D miniatures and made them open and publicly available and publicly accessible. 
including, for example, the entire D&D 5e monster manual. And uh, since they're open and free to use, they've allowed Ripper to import them into 3D Canvas um, and then use them in 3D Canvas itself, which is just a matter of dragging them in, like we did earlier with the Coatl back there. But um, since they were originally designed for 3D printing, they do, of course, come untextured. Um, we do have a few ways to deal with that, which I'll talk about um, shortly. But I thought I'd also mention over here, you can see these painted miniatures here. So these are also from the same collection as the untextured minis over there. But these have been painted by a fellow called Gerbardo. And uh, he's been painting these for a personal project of his. I'll link his website down in the description. Um, but he has also made them freely available in the spirit of MZ's original collection. Um, which, you know, big props to him for that. And there's about 300 of these already in the uh, compendium. You'll find them under the colorized folder when you go in there and looking. Um, obviously, I couldn't say exactly everything that's in there, but there is quite a look, so I definitely suggest um, anyone who's curious go have a look and see what they can find. So those are the two easiest ways to get actor tokens, uh, either using an integrated service like Hero Forge, for example, or making use of the token compendium. But there are, of course, others. 3D Canvas is an open platform, meaning that it doesn't use any special proprietary file formats or anything. Anything that's a GLB or GLTF file will work great, and those are just standard generic formats. Uh, with that in mind, that does mean that you can acquire models from pretty much anywhere. Uh, websites like Sketchfab or any sort of 3D community websites are good places to look, though the specifics on where exactly to get them are a bit outside the scope of this video. Uh, the important thing is just to note that you are free to use models from a wide variety of sources, from just whatever sources you find online, to even custom-made characters commissioned from an artist. So, all that said, on to some of the customization options you've got for 3D minis. Uh, down here, you'll see some miniatures from the compendium that have had materials applied to them. Uh, we've got a ogre mini that I've applied a steel material to, some coloured plastic minis back here of a mimic and a beholder, and a more matte green medusa down here. Uh, what these are is these are settings on the material dropdown in the configuration window of uh, a mini. And these are basically some preset materials that can give things a little bit more life. If I set, for example, this to wood and make it like slightly brown, let's see. That was kind of a wood carved effect there. I quite like the advanced wood material because it gives it a nice kind of matte sheen to it. So this sort of customization is super simple and super flexible. Uh, considering the staggering amount of content in the token compendium, you have access to 3D minis for pretty much anything your players might encounter. Um, a simple change, like making it look like it's made of polished steel or like it's a real plastic miniature, can have a surprisingly large effect on the overall feel of your encounters without having to worry about getting professionally made, specifically painted miniatures. Uh, like if there's something in the colorized section that isn't available that you need, for example. The other uh, simple type of customization you've got available in 3D Canvas is shaders. Um, shaders are mostly a terrain thing, but there are a couple that are for characters specifically. Um, most notably is the idle shader here. What you can do with this is take any static model, tweak the idle shader a bit. Let's see. Let me tweak the speed a little bit, change the settings here. And what you can end up doing is having a really quite convincing kind of idle animation that makes character minis look like they're, you know, breathing, subtly moving, like you, know, like they're a bit alive, really. Speaking of character animation, though, um, something you might have noticed in the advanced settings for minis is indeed this enable animation, animation index, animation speed settings here. If you do actually have a mini with animations, you can use um, 
macros in 3D Canvas or other settings to trigger those animations. So for example, you could have it loop an idle animation while standing still, play a sword swinging animation when you make an attack roll, all that sort of thing. And you can get things really advanced um, and get things looking really quite impressive. I don't actually have an animated character token to show you in this world, otherwise I would. But just so you know, that, that is an option. Uh, one last thing as well. Um, I did mention customizing bases before, so I'll just show you where to go to do that. If you go over to the configure settings window for Foundry in general, go down to 3D Canvas and then click on configure global 3D Canvas settings, then you can change the base style. We just turn the base on this character on here. So the default is this round double ring, but you can set it to you can set it to more subtle ones like this hollow ring here or ones with indicators indicating facing or even hexagonal ones if you're preferring a hex grid um, quite a lot of options available there or you could of course just leave it off depending on what you prefer with that all said i think that does cover the basics of how to get 3d models into 3d canvas what some easy places to get models are, and how to do a little bit of tweaking to get some extra life out of the minis that we have available to us. I'd actually be interested to hear any feedback from you all. Like, are there any aspects of 3D Canvas that you think really need a tutorial? Are there any parts of it that are giving you trouble? And of course, are there any suggestions to improve these tutorials that I'm doing in general? I'm very interested to hear uh, feedback from the community at large. Either way, I hope this has been helpful for you and I'll see you in the next one.